Good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to introduce Professor Dr. Tomasz Piaczykowski to you. Tomasz is an old friend of mine, as I may say, and one of the most prominent friends I have, because uh, Tomasz is inter alia the Vice Rector uh, for Domestic and International Cooperation at the University of Silesia in Katowice in Poland. Uh, apart from this, Thomas is also very active uh, when it comes to politics of science and exchange of science. Uh, in Teelia, he is the head of the equivalent in Poland to the Austrian Österreichische Akademische Austauschdienst or the German Deutsche Akademische Austauschdienst. So the institution that takes care of academic exchange. And he is also the, uh, the chair of uh, the advisory committee to uh, ethics of an animal experiments in Poland right in this moment. And as he told me before this uh, podcast started, uh, there is a change of the law ongoing on animal experiments here in Poland at the moment. So that makes him very active also when it comes to policy consulting and uh, policy advisory work. From his background, uh, Thomas is a lawyer. He studied law um, in, uh, at the University of Silesia, uh, and he very early uh, specialized in issues of legal theory and legal philosophy. That's also the reason why we know each other, because we, I had the privilege to meet him somewhere in, in the 90s, I think, or in the, in, in the very, yeah, I think it was still in the 90s, um, in one of those uh, conferences of uh, young scholars in legal philosophy. Um, uh, so that is still his academic uh, home, I would call it. So he has been doing legal philosophy and legal theory um, and legal ethics uh, for most parts of his career. But on top of this, as I already mentioned, he also constantly worked in, in practical legal work, both as a lawyer as well as a politician or as a con consultant to politicians uh, for his whole career. Uh, so we have someone here uh, who knows university organization and who knows political organization, politics and law, and on top of all this ethics and philosophy of law. I'm really excited to have you with us, Thomas. First question to you, how are you? How is your life at the moment? Good, good afternoon. Thank you, Nicolas, for this really generous introduction. I'm really happy uh, uh, pleased and honored to, to, to be here. Hello to all our audience. Uh, it's, it's great to, 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 to be a part of, of your series. Yeah. Thank you. So before starting, what has changed since, 2000, uh, since March 2020? It is perhaps wise to give an overview about how life was before that. So could you perhaps give us a very short overview about how the, the academic way to become a lawyer or a judge or, um, or uh, an academic looked like or looks like in Poland if there is no COVID-19 crisis? Well, it is, it is pretty standard, I would say, at least in the European context or, or from the European perspective, because, because of course you have, to, you have to graduate from the law school and there are pretty many law schools in Poland in the sense that practically all, all public universities or most uh, uh, public universities all over the country uh, offer such studies. Plus there is several uh, private universities who also offer uh, law studies sometimes uh, even shorter or, or made made a bit easier than than the standard way of five years studies as as it is practiced at the public universities and uh, after that you you have to complete a kind of additional training so you have to pass an exam organized by either a bar uh, we actually we have two similar very similar professions this is the part of specificity of, of the Polish legal profession, I would say that we have two uh, 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 um, practically equivalent professions, advocates and so-called legal counsels. Historically, they were something different, but, but uh, those professions evolved actually to the, to the state today that the, it is very difficult to distinguish one from, from another. But they organize nonetheless separate exams and you can uh, either either apply to the bar of advocates or to the bar uh, uh, gathering legal counsels. Uh, and if you if you prefer to be a judge or a prosecutor, we have for about 10 years in Poland a special state-sponsored school uh, for uh, future judges and prosecutors. 
so so after graduating from the law school you may uh, take the exam to, to be admitted to that central let's say school for judges and prosecutors it is located in Krakow uh, uh, so so these are these four let's say basic options that you have if you if you want to practice law either become an advocate or, or, or legal counsel or judge or a prosecutor. Theoretically, you can also want to become a notary public, but the number of notary, notaries in, in Poland is quite limited and the access to this profession is still very, very narrow, I would say. So, so there are relatively few people that, that actually decide to, to try to, to, to become a notary. This is quite profitable, I would say, but, but very strictly controlled by the by the uh, self-governing bodies of, of the notaries, so that it is extremely difficult to get there. Yes, so it's a five-year um, undergraduate uh, um, curriculum, I yeah. would say. Uh, so that it's not the Bologna system then. No. And, and, and you need, in, if you want to enter one of the more prestigious universities, you need to uh, succeed in a competition before entering first sure. year. Yeah. Sure. Uh, legal studies in, in, in Poland are still quite popular, I would say. So, so the um, admission is quite selective. So even if we have some programs at our university in which practically everyone who, who applies is admitted, like physics, for example, or chemistry or something like that, there are so few people who want to pursue this kind of, of studies and, and uh, career that, that practically the, the access is open. While um, a law studies uh, similar to, for example, psychology, or there are some more popular, let's say, programs uh, among which law is perhaps not the number one, but one of the top five, I would say, in terms of popularity. Uh, so, so it is pretty selective, like like five or six pers persons per one per one place. So, so success rate is is about 20, 30 percent, depending on on the year. Yeah, so it is. It is really elite, I would say, still to some extent uh, yeah. in, in Poland. And as, as you as you correctly mentioned, this is not the Bologna system in Poland. We have only five years studies, so so uh, you you need to complete it from the beginning till the end in order to to to, to be a professional lawyer and and to, to to be eligible to those to those further stages of legal education. And there are no discussions whether or not the Bologna system should be introduced into the There used to be. When, when we were uh, implementing Bologna systems, there were, let's say, a very strong opposition from, from all law schools actually in Poland that, that it is very difficult to, to have a decently educated lawyer after five years. So it is uh, even more uh, uh, difficult to, to, to have that effect after uh, this kind of combination that someone is... is uh, on the different undergraduate studies and then then complete legal degree uh, uh, on just two years uh, further program. So so no, we have we have several programs like medicine, psychology, law, which is which exist only in, in form of so-called uniform five years or six years, like in, in case of medicine uh, version. So so there are no other options actually in Poland. Yeah. And is it, it's? I would assume it's then rather difficult for Polish students to uh, to go abroad during their studies, and it's even more difficult for non-Polish students to come <laughs> to Poland. So that that I would uh, expect has some impact on your profession as a vice rector, doesn't it? Yes, it does. You are right. Uh, so so actually. Um, uh, in practice, there are just two options, either very short stays like Erasmus within Erasmus program when, when students, and it is quite popular. So we have pretty many students, foreign students that, that visit our faculty for one semester or two semesters, but it is within the Erasmus framework. So, so all the uh, classes that, that they complete here are actually recognized on the basis of Erasmus agreements uh, at the home universities. Or, but this is still one semester or two semester, and that that's it. And the other option is just to complete the whole studies in Poland, which happens for foreign students, but it is very rare. Usually, the, they are Eastern students, like Ukrainian, for example, Russian students who prefer, let's say, to become a lawyer in the European Union. So, so it is quite difficult to to get all those. Um, um, 
entitlements rights and, and so on to, to, to be eligible to uh, to do it on the same rules as, as, as Polish students uh, but uh, but there are such cases and we are just starting with an uh, equivalent let's say of law studies uh, which will be uh, actually uh, first level according to Bologna system so it will be three year studies uh, something like international law and arbitration it will be an English English language program addressed practically to, to foreign students uh, mainly, uh, but it will not grant you the, the formal title of a lawyer, so, so you won't be um, uh, entitled to apply to, to those bars or other professions, legal professions mm -hmm. in Poland, unfortunately. So it's a kind of second class law? For, uh, unfortunately. Then... This is mm -hmm. for, for those who don't think about themselves in terms of, let's say, professional legal practice uh, practicing law in, in, in Poland. So it might be attractive for someone who, for example, sees his or her future in the international organizations or so, something like that, rather than a standard career like uh, legal advisor or, or judge mm -hmm. or prosecutor. It is, it is uh, rather people who, who, who don't want to, to be a standard lawyer, so ordinary mm -hmm. regular lawyers. So that's a little bit like the German model of the uh, of the universities of applied sciences uh, offering some kind of specific uh, law studies which do not qualify for yeah. to, for the bar. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was very, very heavily discussed in uh, in Germany because of uh, the question whether this is not a trap, a career <laughs> trap for the people uh, going into this direction. Well, we have a quite. Uh if I may say so, a, a kind of experience in this respect, because actually all law faculties, or at least most law faculties in Poland, uh, offer also studies in administration, in public administration. Uh, mm -hmm. They are quite similar to, 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 to law studies in the sense that most lectures are the same, uh, the programs overlap and so on and so on. But the difference is that you are not a qualified lawyer when you graduate, not from law studies, but from administration. And, and administration is uh, organized according to the uh, uh, Bologna line. So it is divided into two stages. Uh, so uh, according to, let's say, general opinion in Poland, this is this kind of, let's say, B-class studies at law faculty. So if you, if you really want to be a lawyer, you apply to law. If you fail, for example, some of them, you know, prefer to study administration and, and apply again after a year, because at least some of the of lectures or classes are are uh, recognized so that they don't lose uh, the whole year in mm -hmm. such case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And is there is there competition uh, between the different law schools? So uh, do uh, do students have the possibility to choose where to go? And if so, what are the criteria to choose? Well, actually, we don't have. Uh, uh, for many years in Poland, we we uh, uh, we have given up organizing a separate entrance exams. It used to be the case uh, when I applied to to the law school, every law faculty, every university organized uh, their own entrance exam. It was a test, uh, history, and interview, and and something like that. Uh, while now we we are obliged by law to respect the the uh, um, outcomes of final examination at the secondary school. Mm -hmm. So actually the competition takes place there. So those uh, uh, school boys or, and school girls, uh, teenagers who, who think about applying to law school, they are aware that they have to get the outcomes from their final exam and it is state, or state organized uh, um, exam at the end of at the same standards, the same, the same questions and, and so on and so on. So it is uniform all over the country. So actually on this basis, they usually apply to several law schools and you know, then choose from among those where, where, which accepted them. So, so uh, usually it is the best, the best pupils usually get accepted to three or four uh, universities and then they decide where to go. Okay, so the students that you have then are those with the very best grades in 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 school. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 mm -hmm. exactly. Practically, That's... not not perhaps grades, but but grades from the this separate final exam. 
It is the final exam after the secondary school, but it is organized, as I, as I mentioned, not by schools themselves. So there is no difference, let's say that at one school it's easier and, and another it is, it is more difficult because uh, it is, it is uh, in, uh, organized exactly in the same way uh, in, in the whole country. So, so this is a separate exam, but it is between the secondary school and the university. Mm -hmm. Which means that uh, there is an assumption, which is uh, you need to be very good in math to become a good lawyer, or you need to be <laughs> very good in no. foreign languages to become a foreign No? The foreign languages, yes, but, but uh, not all, all uh, subjects, let's say, from the school are taken into account. So, mm -hmm. so depending on which, which uh, program of studies you, you choose, uh, 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 for example, a history or, or, or political science or languages or, or, or something like that, is taken into account. So, mm -hmm. so you choose which kind of subjects you are taking at your final exam. And then if you chose wrongly, your, your, your uh, way to apply to some programs at the university is closed. So it mm -hmm. is a really important and serious choice for, for them what to take at the final exam. And if you want to study law, it would be history and, and yeah. foreign languages and, yeah. and Polish? Yeah. Or what, what would be the typical subjects? Actually, I don't know the details because this is the, this part of the university that I have nothing to do. This okay. is not, I'm not uh -huh. in charge of that. So, yeah. so, but, uh, but for sure it is history. For sure mm -hmm. it, is, it is Polish. And I think that, that foreign language too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is taken into account. Interesting. And then when it comes to, uh, to the choice that uh, the brightest students have, whether to go to uh, Warsaw or to, uh, to your university or to yeah. wherever, yeah. what are the criteria that make them choose one or the other? Is it... Well, that's a good question. Uh, 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 of course, above all, I think, but this is my speculation. I don't have any hard knowledge about that. I, I'm not sure if it is it is uh, you know reliably examined in a, in, a, in a systematic way, but but the general opinion is that first of all the attractiveness of the place, so mm -hmm. so Warsaw, Krakow, uh, Wrocław, uh, Gdańsk, they are usually considered as the most attractive places to live in Poland. So so consequently they are also attractive for for young people to spend five years of, of their life there. So. So this is number one, I would say. And the second is the prestige of, of the university. And in this respect, actually, Warsaw and Krakow are, are let's say, number one. And they are competing, quite, competing with uh, each other quite ferociously, I would say, which of them is number one and who, who wins. There are rankings as everywhere, every year. And uh, one year, the Jagiellonian University in Krakow is ranked number one and Warsaw the second or the other way around. So, so it is very important for them to, 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 to win over the, the other. And mm -hmm. I think that this is also important for students to, to, to be sure that they are applying to, to the university uh, that is, let's say, offers decent quality of, of, of usually teaching because those rankings usually are based on the rather, rather criteria relating to, to, to teaching than research. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it, it does not have to correspond to, let's say, the hard outcomes of, of let's say, uh, or research output or anything like that. But, but uh, it is based on either either surveys among students or the the, the, the formal uh, assessment of the quality of teaching that Ministry of, of Higher Education is is conducting uh, periodically and, and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. And is the curriculum standardized? So no. is no. So no. It's, Practically mm -hmm. every university uh, establishes it for, for itself. Uh, of course, there are some general criteria concerning these credits and and, and so on. But uh, for for how many hours of work you can get one credit and and so on. But what kind of of courses uh, are mandatory, which are fac uh, uh, optional? At which year uh, it is all up to, to particular faculties actually to, to decide. So the, the program of studies actually vary, varies enormously from one university to another. Yeah, but all of them have in common that legal theory and legal philosophy and ethics are much more covered and much more intensely covered than 
a German or an Austrian student would expect, correct? At least at public universities in Poland, it is still the case that, that legal theory and, and legal philosophy are have occupied quite a strong position in the curriculum. Mm -hmm. uh, the situation is different in, in private universities because, you know, first of all, they have they have more limited resources, so they hire only those lecturers that, that, that are really necessary to, to complete the, the program and to be attractive for students. Uh, they are not interested usually in research at all, so, so they are rather teaching institutions than, than, than the full universities, with some exceptions, but this is generally the, the, the case. Uh, so, so uh, taking into account that usually legal theory and legal philosophy is, is not something that is most expected by candidates that, that apply to, to a given law school, uh, if they may skip it in the curriculum, I mean private universities, they usually do or limit at least the scope of, of uh, uh, such courses, while in public universities it is still considered, a, let's say, uh, indispensable part of, of, of mm -hmm. legal education and, and skills that, that, that mm -hmm. the future lawyer has to possess, possess. And the private universities, are they successful in competing? So for, for candidates who have the choice, is it, is it realistic that they would choose a private university or are they still just the second best option? They are, there are two or three exceptions, mainly in Warsaw, they are, they are quite good quality private universities, very internationalized, uh, you know, with very successful, let's say, rates of, of future employment and so on and so on. But there are just three or four uh, in, 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 in Poland. The rest is, as you, as you called it, the second class that, mm -hmm. that people who are not accepted to the public institution uh, can can mm -hmm. go there and they are they are admitted just on condition that they pay for for their studies yeah and the public universities don't ask for any fees but the private ones obviously yeah. do right we so, have actually yeah. it as a constitutional principle there is a rule in polish constitution that the education at high, uh, the higher education is is free mm -hmm. uh, so so uh, there were even a ruling uh, of the Polish Constitutional Court, this was quite an interesting case, like 20 years ago or something like that, uh, because uh, uh, the, the, the constitutional provision says that the education in higher, um, on a higher uh, level is free, but there might be some exceptions to that. And uh, universities started to introduce such exceptions, like for example, if you have to repeat the year, you have to pay or, or some, some additional, let's say, offers that, 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 uh, that were on the separate, let's say, basis. Uh, and uh, and it was, it was, uh, 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 there was a complaint to the court that, you know, those exceptions go too far. Mm -hmm. And actually the court then decided that, that uh, it must be very, very strictly limited. The, the, the range of things uh, for which you can charge students at the public universities. So we have actually, close the way to, to, to ex expand with, with this, let's say, commercial part of, of our activity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Although this... there are part-time studies, but this is also important that, that public universities, apart from, from standard offer that, that, that is free, it also offers a, a commercial uh, courses, a, a kind of weekend studies. Uh, which are theoretically addressed to, to, let's say, those who are already working and don't have time in, in, in uh, normal uh, work days. Uh, so so, so it, is, it is a kind of separate offer and it, it is uh, uh, paid. Uh, but uh, uh, the popularity of those studies, which it was enormous 20 years ago or mm -hmm. 25 years ago, uh, because there were very, very few places at the free legal studies in comparison with the demand. Mm -hmm. uh, while now, the, due to demographic changes, actually, actually there are not very uh, many more uh, young people uh, completing their secondary school and intending to study law than places, free places at the public universities. So, mm -hmm. so actually it, it is not, no longer so popular as it used to be in, in the past. And actually being a lawyer now, it is much less prof profitable in Poland than it used to be 20 years ago because you know, the number of lawyers grew so, 
so enormously that now it's very difficult to cope in the market. So, so the level of attractiveness, I would say, of the profession also decreased. So, so it, it made that investment in, in, let's say, this kind of paid studies uh, much less attractive. And, and why is this? Because the universities simply educate too many? Uh, and First, universities educated, educate, uh, educated and still educate too many uh, 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 people mm -hmm. uh, at law faculties. Uh, remember that we have those private universities too, uh, and if, uh, above all, there is a uh, uh, the, the, there was a huge change in the level of this of this additional training. It was the let's say very narrow path in the past. So the bars mm -hmm. uh, or uh, granted these these places for a very few people actually every year. So it was a a, a huge life success, I would say, to to, to get admitted to the first this bar training and then uh, pass an exam and become an advocate or, or judge or someone like that. Now it changed and, and actually those, those professions are much more numerous, I would say. And, and uh, that is the reason why uh, in particular young lawyers have a very hard time beginning to, 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 to their career and, and trying to establish their own firm or or office, so so now uh, it is. It, it takes many years to to get, let's say, uh, to the position that that in the past were actually automatic outcome of, of getting the professional uh, uh, qualifications and and starting a career. Yeah, and how is this with with academics? Is it similar there that uh, the position has become less attractive? How do you become an an, an academic in Poland? <laughs> What, what it's, do you need to it's do? It's just very deeply changing because because we had a huge and very deep reform of universities two years ago actually, and it's and it's still at the beginning, let's say, of, of the uh, new system that that you know quite recently started to to actually uh, operate. Uh, so in the past, actually, the the, the situation was very simple. So so uh, in practice. Uh, lecture, <coughs> lecturers just uh, offered, let's say, that the most brilliant or talented students who were about to graduate the possibility to continue their education, to make their PhD, and and then to stay at the university. So po the the problem of Polish universities was the let's say homogeneity and and closeness, mm -hmm. meaning that actually all researchers or predominant majority of researchers come from the very university in which they continued their career. I'm a good example of that. I studied at the University of Silesia, then continued my PhD there, and, and I'm mm -hmm. a professor there. So it was a typical path, let's say, of, of uh, becoming and, and, and uh, living as an academic in, in Poland. Now we change it fundamentally uh, and, uh, and uh, change the policy, let's say, of, of uh, uh, recruiting PhD students, we establish a separate doctoral schools at, at each universities, which are to some extent obliged to make a kind of open recruitment uh, for 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 the positions that that they offer every year. So last year at our university was the first time when we make such a recruitment, and actually the the outcomes were completely different. So so most of our PhD students are from other places than than our university. So it will be a rule, I guess, in, in, in future that, that you, uh, to a large extent, similar as now you apply to several, let's say, universities as an undergraduate student, I think that in future it will be the similar way to apply to doctoral schools if you, if you want to pursue uh, your academic career. But it is mm -hmm. brand new and, and it was, you know, Nobody knows if, if, if the system will actually get accepted and, and, and remain in, in Poland because it's, as you can imagine, extremely controversial change. And now uh, it is a problem what to offer to, to, to uh, first of all, uh, uh, graduates who, who hesitate what to do next. We cannot guarantee them anything actually as their supervisors on the, on the level of their master thesis and, and so on. So mm -hmm. everything that we can tell them or advise them is to, you know, you, you can apply, wait until the doctoral school will uh, organize the recruitment and apply there either to our 
or to, to, to other doctoral school. And we have still not solved the problem what to do with our PhD because in the past, when you completed your PhD at the given university and this PhD was, was uh, evaluated as you know, outstanding, practically automatically you were offered a, a job there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and now it is no longer the case because, because it was completely separated. So the doctoral school is, is a separate entity actually within the university from faculties who, who have to pursue their own, uh, let's say, employment policies or recruitment policies. So actually they, they are supposed to, to open recruitment when they need someone not when there is someone who just uh, finished his or her PhD studies. So, mm -hmm. so we have a gap now between, between uh, let's say, the, 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 the PhD school and the rest of the university who, who operates, uh, let's say, uh, concentrated on, on their own needs, actually, not, not on, on those uh, own PhD candidates. Mm -hmm. But I would assume that that will have a serious impact on the attractiveness of the career. True. So, so uh, on the one hand, of course, uh, you cannot be sure that you will be offered the continuation, irrespective mm -hmm. of how successful you are at your master or at your PhD. But on the other hand, uh, uh, it is opening, let's say, the, the, the universities for candidates from other institutions. So, so mm -hmm. in the past, nobody even, even think about applying to, to other universities. For example, if you completed your PhD at the University of Silesia, you, you had zero chance that you will be recruited at the Warsaw University or Wrocław mm -hmm. University because they, they had their own PhD uh, candidates that they were waiting until they, they finished their thesis and, and, and uh, be recruited there. So, so now actually the situation is more, let's say, fluent and, and I would say open and transparent so there is just an open open uh, contest of anyone interested in getting a job uh, rather than you know uh, channeling of, of of that to to your own let's say people that you are somehow uh, uh, pulling for for all their careers so 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 i think that at the end this this change will be will be uh, good both for the quality of, of, of uh, science and research in Poland and uh, uh, for the fairness, let's say, of those procedures, which are, which are actually just a pseudo contest up to now, because of course we are obliged to organize the, let's say, kind of, 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 of competition between candidates, but everybody knew that, you know, just, uh, just uh, uh, one candidate, the one because of whom this uh, competition was organized has a real chance to win. Mm -hmm. But I would assume that a requirement for this would be that at least the career perspective is competitive in the sense that for some people it's a good choice to, to go to a university instead to, I don't know, one of the big law firms or, or to become a judge or so. We don't um, have this problem actually. So, so, mm -hmm. so, so uh, I, I don't think that there are few people interested in academic mm -hmm. career in Poland. So, so, so up to now, it, 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 it was not, let's say, the main uh, issue, let's say, in, in those reforms, how to make, let's say, your academic career more attractive in comparison with, with mm -hmm. let's say, business competition or environment. We have this problem for, actually, for computer scientists. It is... Mm -hmm. uh, it is such a such a gap between the conditions that the university can offer to to someone who who graduated from computer science and, for example, thinks about about uh, making PhD or continuing as a lecturer or researcher at the university, and the conditions that are offered by huge computer firms like IBM or or mm -hmm. software uh, uh, giants and so on and so on. That, that actually we have practically no chance to attract anyone. So, so mm -hmm. there are very few people who, who want to, to, to continue their education above, let's say, the, the level of, of graduate studies in Poland. This is not only the, the problem of our university, the problem of Poland as such. And, and there really is that problem. But among lawyers, I wouldn't say that, that mm -hmm. uh, it is so attractive to, to, to be at the market that, you know, that they don't think about making PhD or, or becoming professors. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it's still 
so attractive then is because of the academic independence or is it because you 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 are still prestige, in a very stable say. it's the prestige okay is the prestige and the fact that that uh, uh, i i guess that contrary to the situation in germany and austria we actually still tolerate uh, and for many years have tolerated combining the two so people mm -hmm. who who were researchers lecturers and so on at the same time uh, were advocates or judges or prosecutors and so on and actually they were much more attractive at the market when they were also they had such titles academic titles and position at the university so so actually it was considered as as not mutually exclusive and mm -hmm. and something that actually boost your 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 market career your let's say fees that you can charge and and so on and so on so so mm -hmm. many people i think decided to continue their career thinking that sooner or later they will they will get at the market too mm -hmm. And this is still the case. So this is still the case. Mm -hmm. A bit more restrained now. Uh, and for example, for PhD, we have a policy that we we cannot prohibit that, but we strongly discourage PhD candidates from from working at the same time when they are when mm -hmm. they are pursuing the, their degree. Uh, and actually, we organize the, the the lectures and classes for them in a way that make makes it quite difficult to to. To reconcile it with a standard uh, work somewhere else so so it is it is changing but slowly and and i think that the impact on the decisions of, of uh, uh, people graduating from studies will come in in, in a couple of years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so let's see one one change is already here i assume that's the covid related change <laughs> so how did academic life and how did practical legal life change since uh, March of this year? Well, it, it was it was a, a turmoil, I would say. So, so actually, we were we were surprised by by not only by the pandemic, this tool, of course, but by the governmental decision that that all classes will have to be switched into online system practically uh, immediately so so there was a decision of the ministry of higher education that that uh, uh, standard classes are no longer allowed to continue so only online classes may may take place so so actually we had to change all classes including including those at the law school from one week to another and and to ask the the teachers, lecturers to, to switch into uh, online system immediately, whether they had any experience with that or not. Uh, so it was really, really challenging and difficult. And, and I would say that we were relatively successful with that, meaning that, that like 90% of classes just continued and in this form or another, I mean that either on Zoom or Teams or or in some cases, even on a very simple system that the lecturers just, because we, we m made no uh, restrictions at the university uh, as, as uh, regards the form in which this online class may continue, because it was sufficiently difficult, let's say, to persuade teachers to, to, to do it uh, in any way. Uh, uh, so, so we decided that it's better that they will do it in the way they like, rather than you know refuse to, to continue at all so they, they were free to to do whatever they want to to to, to complete the class uh, on a distant learning basis and in some cases it was just the sending emails with materials to read and then uh, you know organizing an exam at the end so so mm -hmm. it is something that we will not tolerate any longer in in this semester so so the range of possibilities of online learning will be much more limited so so it will be recommended to have either, uh, let's say, a synchronic uh, class in the sense that it is live in an online system like Zoom or something like that, in particular, if the, the class is small. In case of lectures, it will be probably uh, mm, uh, expected that, that it will be uh, provided online as a recording but the time that normally would uh, would be devoted to, to 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 a live class will be just a consultation time. So so uh, it will be allowed uh, for.
for students just to contact at that time and, and the teacher will have to be available for them to, to let's say, discuss, uh, uh, clarify something and, and, and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. So that uh, we, we are not going to accept the situation in which the, the lecturer just, you know, publishes the, the, the whole series of lectures online and, and you know, away. comes back, it goes mm -hmm. away and mm -hmm. comes back mm -hmm. after after a couple of months. So, so mm -hmm. it, is, it is not not uh, the, mm -hmm. the system that we want to uh, to continue. Yeah, and uh, several questions here. First one, obviously, this puts a lot more workload on the shoulders of the of of the academic staff. Teaching suddenly becomes much more time consuming than before. So is this uh, compensated in a way? Do you hire more teachers or do you pay them more or do you expect them to do less research or? Up to now, not. And, uh, and I'm a kind of a victim of that as a lecturer myself because uh, uh, I had a quite comfortable situation in the last semester because I had just one small class uh, that I could easily continue online. So, so I reorganized the class in the sense that that uh, we had a couple of meetings with those 15 or, or so students on Zoom. Uh, and, and then I asked them to, to uh, arrange an individual, a series of individual meetings with, with me. So, so instead of having one hour and a half with the whole group, I divided that, that time into a shorter 20 minute slots and mm -hmm. uh, organized you know, a meeting, individual meeting with each of students separately, a shorter one, of course, and uh, uh, assign them the, the, the topics that they can choose from among uh, fr from them. And, uh, and uh, that time slot was uh, devoted to discuss, let's say, the, the, the chosen topic from, by the student himself uh, or herself. So, uh, so actually, it was quite successful. I was really satisfied. I think that, that you know, it was more efficient at the standard meeting with the whole group at the class because usually at such situation there is a, a subgroup of those who are quite active and talk to you and you know take the the burden let's say of activity and there is another subgroup which is which is silent and you you have to strongly encourage them to to participate actively well in in case of such individual uh, online meetings Everyone actually was forced somehow to prepare something and to to to, to talk to you individually uh, on 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 the merits, let's say, of of, of the class. Uh, so I was I was positively surprised about th those effects. So uh, students who who normally would be just you know very passive uh, in in such system had to activate themselves and and you know some of them did very well. I would say. Uh, so I, I'm going to repeat that this semester, perhaps refine it further, uh, but I'm in, in a more, much more difficult situation because I have a lecture on philosophy for the first year <laughs> students. So it is like 350 participants or, or something like that. So I, I, I think that, you know, it is impossible to do it for due technical reasons on a live basis because uh, uh, you know the I, I don't trust let's say the technology <laughs> sufficiently to believe that you know everybody will be will be really able to understand what I'm talking about the the, the level the, the quality of, of you know sound and and, and, and vision will be will be uh, sufficient so mm -hmm. I decided to record the whole the whole lecture and uh, change that time of make it available for them to, to listen or watch whenever they want. Probably I will chunk it into a smaller, uh, mm, let's say, uh, parts. It, it won't be like one hour and a half of a lecture just recorded. It will be mm -hmm. like 15 or 20 minutes podcast uh, that, that will be much easier, let's say, to, uh, to use for, for students to handle. Uh, and, and then I devote that time that, that normally would be uh, uh, the time of, of my lecturing for this kind of individual individual meetings with those who, who are particularly interested in the subject. And I still not decided whether those individual meetings will be online too, or perhaps they will be just in person to, to let those first year students to, to be at least partially physically present at the, 
at the mm -hmm. university. This is our special concern, first year students, because, because if we uh, continue this fully online system, it is very difficult to integrate them with the rest of their year, with their, uh, with, with their colleagues and so on and so on. So we, we are thinking about creating some opportunities for them to meet in person with, with teachers, with, with the rest of, of, of their group and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, which is of course risky due to due to the health uh, uh, danger and 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 restrictions. But on the other hand, um, it it rescues somehow at least some feeling of being a part of the academic community. Otherwise, you know, they they will just stay home and with parents and and you know have just online contacts with with teachers and and that that's not enough, I would say, for, for becoming a part, an integrated part to, of the university. So, so perhaps this kind of meetings, instead of standard lecture, will help them to, to, to do in a relatively safe way, to, to, to have to come to the university, to spend some time there, to, to meet someone, to talk with someone, to meet the lecture, and, and so on. So it is a kind of compromise between, between safety and, and other concerns that that, that, that we have uh, thinking about, about uh, in particular first year students. Mm -hmm. And will you put these chunks of your lectures online on the open internet or will it be available only for your students? Uh, I'm not sure, we have this Moodle platform. I, I've never made uh, anything available there. This will be my first time of any recordings of, of this kind. So I'm not sure what are the, let's say way to, to get there, uh, uh, if if there won't be any particular reasons to keep it uh, uh, available only for students, I would much prefer to make it make it available for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, perhaps I'm I'm not uh, uh, well, self confident enough to to believe that there will be many viewers. <laughs> you no, know, apart from the well, group that that I mean, will have to pass an exam at the end. <laughs> But, well, I mean, there is there is a personal question in this, which is you as a teacher, how do you do it? But there is also a strategic question in this: how does the university do it? Yeah. yeah. And from a strategic point of view, you don't have a decision yet, do you? No, we don't have. We we have not talked about that actually. Whether we should adopt such a uh, let's say intentional policy of making everything available to to everyone. I don't think so, actually, because because uh, if if I I was asked about that, probably I would be against that because uh, because uh, uh, perhaps we should take some care also to uh, uh, to to make uh, let's say our students feeling a bit privileged, so to say, that they have access to something that is that is you know especially for them because they are our students but, otherwise you know <laughs> it but doesn't couldn't that be with... i mean couldn't that be the personal time with you perhaps and... it could be yeah you, yeah you are right i haven't thought about that actually mm -hmm. and and uh, we have to to find some some reasonable way in between let's say not not making it secret on the one hand and on the other hand you know uh, uh letting our students feel that that something is you know especially for them because they are they are our students mm -hmm. not an accidental mm -hmm. uh, bypassers yeah and if i get it correctly the standard setting uh in autumn for your university will be that more or less everything which is not first year is supposed to be online uh, which is not first year and which is not the uh, by its very nature, uh, impossible to, to, to do online, like laboratories, yeah. like practical exercise or something like that. We but have in, some law, in yes. law, it will yes. be yes. everything it which would. is not first year will be online. Okay. True. And, and is this just for the next uh, term now because there is no alternative or is this something that you will develop further? Even after no, the our pandemic. idea is, is, is of course blended rather than, than purely online, meaning that that uh, at least some classes perhaps uh, will be possible to organize in, in a way that part of the group is present at the classroom and there is a screen on, on the wall mm -hmm. and the rest is, is present online. I have some, uh, some experience with that because one of those co councils that I um, that I'm part of that you mentioned introducing me 
we regularly organize uh, meetings in such a blended way. So part of the council is physically present in Warsaw and the rest are participating online and we have a screen and you know they yeah. are they are just you know talking from um, uh, from the computer uh, and and it works actually I th of course it is much more difficult than than the standard online class where everybody is is, is mm. uh, on the same let's say footing uh, uh, you have to get used you have to let's say remember that you know you are not only with the company, the company of those who are physically with you at the room, but there are some other people who want to talk or, or intervene or, or, or should vote or something like that. So in this sense, you, you need to be very careful and, and actually actually train that skill of, of conducting this kind of, of meeting. But it is possible and I think that, that uh, it, it could be a very good solution also for for uh, uh, let's say foreign students, uh, uh, in, in many cases, you know, uh, they can continue, for example, class even if they have to go home for for some time. Of course, it will not replace, let's say, mobility. It, it shouldn't. So, because the part mm -hmm. of the of the, the the very point of of this, let's say, student exchange is that they go somewhere, have to cope there, have to, you know, get familiar with the new places, new people. Uh, somehow, somehow. Uh, 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 learn a lot of practical, let's say, uh, uh, overcome a lot of practical difficulties, which is a part of their education, which is impossible if, if you stay at, at your place. But uh, uh, for, for many, let's say, uh, particular reasons uh, which make it impossible for students nowadays to take part in individual classes, it could be a solution. Mm -hmm. So I think that soon, and for example, for visiting professors, uh, it is also a very completely new possibility that you can hire, let's say, someone from from the other part of the world and don't have to ask them to travel, you know, such a long way to, to spend a couple of months at at your home institution and so on, but, but rather to conduct the class from, from abroad. Mm -hmm. So we can imagine also the situation in which the group is, is present at the classroom and the mm -hmm. lecture is is uh, virtually present only. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to, to develop, let's say, those, those solutions uh, 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 in order to, to, to make at least some of them a standard part of, of our future operation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and how, how did the students or how are the students reacting on this? Do you ask them and do you have any feedback from your students? We made, uh, we made a kind of survey among foreign students uh, at our university. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and actually the, the, the feedback was quite good. So, so they, they had no complaints in, in terms of quality of those online classes, which was our concern, main concern, because most of our lecturers actually had, uh, had, had no experience previously uh, with, with this form of, of teaching. We had actually very restrictive rules concerning the who can uh, run an online class. You had to apply for special permission from the rector, uh, get a special training and, and so on and so mm -hmm. on. It was very difficult to, to be allowed to, to run such classes before pandemic. Uh, and and uh, so, so there were a handful actually of, of those who, who had any prior experience with that. Uh, so, so actually, there was a huge risk that that it just won't won't be of any any decent quality. But mm -hmm. but actually, the the results were acceptable, I would say. Uh, so 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 they felt safe. They they felt cared about, and they felt let's say taught appropriately. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so uh, apart from let's say. Uh, few individual complaints i think that 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 you know we passed that exam and and we can base our future let's say decisions on the experience that we gained uh, mm -hmm. through through that semester yeah and and the teaching staff did you ask them as well the lecturers how they on the on one faculty actually uh, mm -hmm. the, the the dean of one faculty decided to to conduct this kind of mm -hmm. questionnaire among among students and 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 staff uh, and uh, well, it was much more mi much more mixed, I would say that that feedback. So so mm -hmm. many people still, but there is a, a huge number of those who actually 
uh, change their minds. So, so those, and I think I'm one of them. So, so if you would have asked me uh, uh, a year ago whether uh, online teaching is a good idea, probably my answer would be would be predictably <laughs> no. Uh, but now I think that there are many more opportunities than 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 loss. I would say in in, mm -hmm. in this form of, mm -hmm. of teaching, so we can gain a lot in terms of perhaps this is this is my special perspective on someone responsible for for this uh, uh, academic exchange. So the, the opportunities that, that arise uh, when you don't have to have a lecture or a student physically present every time that you, that you need him to, to do something is mm -hmm. really game changer, I would say. So, so we can mm -hmm. think about expanding, let's say, the, the, the uh, group of lecturers, the, 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 the uh, kind of classes that we offer and so on and so on, much easier than than, mm -hmm. than it seemed to be the case uh, before the, the COVID crisis. Yes, yes. And, and how is it with practical legal work? So uh, are there any changes to be seen there as well when it comes to the court system or the, uh, the consultancy work of lawyers? Yeah, actually the, the court suspended their operation for some time at the beginning of COVID for a mm -hmm. month or so. Actually, nothing, nothing worked. Uh, except, let's say, some emergency situation, of course, then it was organized on a, on a separate basis. But normally, court didn't, didn't work. Uh, then they, they restored that works first trying to do it online. And I guess that uh, in some cases, it is still the case that, that, that courts uh, try to uh, hold sessions online. Uh, now it is also returning to the, to the standard way uh, because you know everybody got used to, to to COVID risk and and it is not so the the level of panic is much lower at, than in March or April. Uh, so now there are some sanitary restrictions like masks and and this kind of plastic shields that are in between mm -hmm. the court and and participants and so on. Uh, uh, but it is it is slowly let's say returning to to more or less normal. Although the, there is a huge number of, 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 of cases that, uh, that are delayed because of, of that crisis. And uh, uh, I'm really interested in, uh, in the statistics after the end of that year, because we had a problem with the slow pace of, of courts uh, uh, deciding cases uh, already before, before COVID. And now I get that the average number of months needed to, uh, for the court to hear the case will, uh, will get even longer. So, so probably we will have to, to look for, for some special solutions to unblock, let's say, the, 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 the operation of the courts. Because this is one of the nightmares, let's say, nightmares of the Polish legal system is the, is the slow pace of, of, of courts operation and uh, in particular in business cases it is it is horrible that you know in order to get your money back or, or the the court ruling or something like that you need to, to wait years sometimes so so this is a real problem for for investors for for developing of, 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 of business in Poland so I guess that sooner or later some special solution will, will have to be found to, to uh, somehow make up for, for, for that additional delays due to, due to uh, the suspension and, and, and problems with COVID. Yeah, but there are no real works or solution to be seen at the moment, so. No, 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 mm -hmm. no special solutions. Uh, so uh, I guess that, that, you know, the, the Polish legal system is, is, generally speaking, is in a, let's say, very difficult situation because of known, let's say, political pressures and, and uh, the, uh, let's say, tension between judges and the government, the Ministry of Justice and so on. So uh, it doesn't make it easy to, to solve this kind of additional problem that, that appeared because of, of COVID crisis. So actually, the ministry and the, the judges are focused more on, let's say, uh, the, the, the political problem with trying the governmental 
attempt to, 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 to you know, take over the control of the judiciary then to you know, the, the standard problems with how fast the, the courts proceed and, and uh, how, how much time you need to, to get your, your ruling and, and so on and so on. Uh, so uh, normally probably much more attention would be paid to, to, to these practical issues rather than the political uh, aspect, let's say, of the of independence of the courts and, and uh, the political um, pressures and, and, and conflicts around, let's say, the uh, new laws that 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 you know make it. We had elections quite recently in Poland, and of course, the validity of those elections uh, were also decided by the Supreme Court, which is in the center of those political debates. So, so generally speaking, it is not easy to look for solutions for particular COVID problems when you are in a in a total war. Uh, between judiciary and and the government. Yeah, I completely understand the last point that you make. However, I think uh, if I may say so, uh, it's not just a COVID problem, right? I mean, the digitalization uh, of the judicial system is not uh, a topic since March. Uh, it has been a topic yeah. for, for for longer, and it will be a, to a topic also after the ending of this crisis. And may I ask you also a question? What is your opinion on, on the idea of online court cases and, and sessions? Do you think that, that it is feasible at all and, and we can do it safely in terms of, of the quality, let's say, of judging and, and deciding cases? So my personal opinion on this, when it, and it's, it very much depends op obviously on the substance, so I would be more reluctant when it comes to criminal law. But in civil law, I don't see anything which could not be substituted by electronic means. And I would also like to argue that we can see already that in many, in outside the traditional state-driven judicial system, so in particular when it comes to uh, alternative dispute resolutions, all kinds of electronic means are already used on a daily basis. And I don't see this system competing with the judicial system in the traditional way to be in a crisis. It's the you know, the, it's the attacker, not the defendant. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but that's only my personal opinion, obviously. And I. And I mean, why, I, why, why do you think that criminal matters is is a, are a different story? Because I think it's 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 important to see uh, the person um, uh, in, uh, about whom you judge uh, when it comes to all this. You know, the 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 moral and ethical aspects of crime and of crime. And, and, and of judgment about crime. And that is not the case in civil law, in my view. I mean, civil so you law is- you think that, that it is the, the question of perception, let's say, of, of someone's behavior is, is, is different in, if you- No, I don't think that it's so much, I mean, uh, that's it. funny now because it's getting an interview in the other way around. <laughs> uh, so, uh, no, no, but fine, I, I will try to answer the question. I, it's not so much about the perception of the criminal, it's more about the um, the expectation the criminal still might have, which is to speak to a human and to explain okay. himself or herself to a human uh, face to face. Uh, and I don't think that that can be very easily substituted. And therefore, I would probably also be more reluctant when it comes to, I don't know, divorce law or, or heritage law uh, and, and such personal issues but when it comes to you know hardcore civil law or or business law um i i think that the advantages uh, are 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 much stronger than the disadvantages i see yeah okay but i think about i i also need to say that this is clearly not uh the mainstream position that i'm having here in 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 german-speaking countries the mainstream position is very much like yours I would say, yeah. yeah, which is uh, this is an exception now, and it needs yeah. to end after the crisis, and we need to come back to okay. uh, face to face situations okay. Good. quickly. Good. Good. Yeah, okay. Thomas, uh, more than an hour now that we speak, <laughs> and at the end, I'm sorry, it's more me speaking than you. Um, <laughs> no, but it was really interesting, and I, I, I think that I, I will have to make an interview with you. A separate yeah. one on the digitalization and uh, virtualization um, of, of uh, yeah. court. 
Yeah, okay. certainly we can do this if you wish. Uh, <laughs> but for but for the moment, let me very warmly thank you, but not finish with this without asking you whether there is any specific topic you would like to add or any comment that you would like to add to what was already said. Anything? Well, I think that the, the, just just one general observation or reflection that that uh, 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 there is a, a well-known principle that that you should you know the crisis is opportunity that you should should look at all those particular difficulties as something that you you can draw many let's say positive uh, uh, new insights uh, how to how to make progress how to improve things that that uh, seemed uh, unimaginable or impossible in the past and i think that that for me covid is precisely this situation that we can actually make the legal education much better after the covid problem ends and uh, i'm not i'm much less certain about that in terms of legal practice as, as the last part of our discussion suggests but in terms of education not only legal education but university education as such i think that it opens completely new horizons and completely new uh, opportunities and and uh, perhaps over the course of time you know covid will be a kind of breakthrough that 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 accelerated you know the the processes that otherwise would take years to to get us to the same position as where we are now mm -hmm. so that's a very positive uh, end i would <laughs> say right and a very optimistic one and uh thank you so much thomas for your time uh thank you to our listeners for their time um i appreciate both um, I wish you a wonderful evening. Um, please stay healthy, please stay safe, and uh, please keep in touch with us. I really like uh, to communicate with you, Thomas. That has been a real privilege now for many years. And I would be very happy to receive feedback from our audience as well. Thank you so much and have a good evening. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you. It was a great pleasure for me too.